Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community, where we explore all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, we will be doing an unboxing and first impressions of the Clipses, the Fives. Now, this Fives that I've just received, just came to my doorstep this afternoon, uh, was given to me by Clips as a gift uh, from winning the uh, Hi-Fi Summits uh, contest back in June, uh, and that was just a week after Clips announced uh, the Fives were um, available. Uh, the the, the Hi-Fi Summit, the first one in June, uh, they presented these speakers. There was a contest. I was lucky enough to be uh, one of the recipients of, of the, uh, the unit. And, but now here it is into November, and I just received it. And the reason why is these have become so popular that they're often uh, shown as out of stock on the Clips' website. So I had to wait uh, patiently, and you know, thanks to everybody at Clips, uh, uh, Katie, et cetera, uh, for making sure that I finally got uh, my set of the five. So let's get right into this and, and start the unboxing. The Clips the Fives are the first speaker of a powered speaker of this type that connects with uh, such flexibility. It has uh, HDMI connectivity via ARC, and that's what, what made this unique in the market when it came out in June. So let's take a look what's in this box. So we get a remote. We get a manual. We get some cables in here. Let's take a look what's in this bag. So this is an HDMI cable. They provide a USB cable, it appears. There's a proprietary uh, connection for this is to go between the two speakers and of course a power connector. So that handles the power. And you take the first layer of foam off of here. Pull these out. The uh, set that I got, these are available in two finishes. Luke, can you pull that down? Thank you very much. I got these are available in two finished black, but these are the walnut. I really like that traditional um, look that walnut gives you. Now these are the grills. With the walnut, the grills are a uh, grayish color. We'll open that in a second. They're uh, magnetic fitting grills. Now one thing that's neat about the bottom of the, the clips is instead of putting traditional feet, the whole bottom here is uh, made out of a cork. And that's got to prevent the, both the speaker and the surf that's on from scratching. Wow. Now what's really exciting to me is we, I hear a lot of reviews and uh, enthusiasts speak very highly of Clips, uh, certainly a brand that's well known over the years, but I've yet to own a pair of Clips speakers. And as you may have realized, most of my uh, speakers are Polk Audio, uh, the LSI, LSI-M uh, series. And uh, so it will be nice to compare uh, these Clips uh, against the Polk Audio. Now, of course, these are powered, so uh, I'll, it's maybe not a fair comparison. To, but let's, let's see how they do against the Polk Audios. Uh, these are obviously smaller than the bookshelf uh, Polks that I have. Let's get the second one on. So this, this speaker here doesn't have the uh, volume knob and on that. So this is the slave one, if you will. And then the main speaker must be this other one. And here's the other grill cloth.
And I just checked again that these speakers are still uh, back ordered. And here it is, the, uh, the second clips. My assistant is pulling out the grill cloths, and these are just going to snap into place. Do you want to do the second one? Oh, these are nice. This has got a very nice metallic uh, volume and input selection knob with um, just enough. Uh, Thank you. So as part of the Heritage line, these speakers have the, uh, the classic uh, Clips logo on here. Uh, turning around the back, let's take a look at the inputs on here. And I'll turn the other one as well. And you can see here predominantly is the proprietary uh, interconnect between the two speakers. So looking around the back here, and I'm going to turn on my, my phone light here so I can see better, but there's a, a, uh, an analog input labeled for phono, and you can choose between line and phono. So if you don't have a phonograph, you can actually use this for an analog input, stereo input. Uh, there's an auxiliary with a, an eighth inch uh, phono jack, uh, subwoofer output, um, and then you have optical in, so we can be, uh, this is your SPDIF section, uh, you can bring in optical, um, and then you, USB audio, so you could plug a PC directly into this. Here's your HDMI ARC connection, uh, service connection, and here is your choice of which one's going to act as the master. Is it going to be the left or the right speaker? It defaults to the right. And then a pairing uh, button here as well. So that covers it for the basic unboxing. Uh, oh, I do want to show you here, though, on the top of... I do want to show you on the top of this unit, and I'm going to be careful not to scratch or damage here, is there is the um, source selection and the volume selection. Taking a look at these speakers themselves, Taking a look at the speakers themselves, we see the tweeter here with the uh, traditional uh, Clips waveguide uh, horn, and then we've got a uh, the the driver here. Um, now it's not copper like some of their models, so it, it doesn't have the same quality of driver that's in their reference uh, Premier series. Uh, but we'll we'll get a good test on this and see how it sounds. And of course, on the back here, we, we see that this is a ported speaker. Uh, so we'll hear how the, uh, the bass response is going to be. So the next step on this is to you know, hook them up, power them up, and see how they sound. It's been just over a week since RipeWave Audio received the fives from Clips as part of their giveaway that uh, was done in conjunction with the Hi-Fi Summit. Uh, and now we can sit back and tell you what we found from running this through uh, a very a variety of test scenarios, as well as a little bit of background about the fives themselves. Now the fives are designed as a step up to television sound bars, and, and much more than that. As noted earlier, these powered speakers are available in a choice of walnut or matte black real wood veneer finishes for $799 a pair. I immediately noticed the quality materials used in these speakers. They are certainly well crafted. I particularly like the cloth grills, which remind me of the linen grills that were on the Advent speakers I grew up with in the late 70s. So it is fitting these are part of Klipsch's Heritage Line, which draws its design cues back to Clips models that even predate those Advent speakers I know so well. The classic Tractrix uh, horn lets you know that these are from Clips. It's one inch titanium dome linear travel suspension LTS tweeter 
is the same as that found on the RP600M, and of course those are very well regarded uh, models. Albeit the 4.5 inch woofer is not the same as that's found on the RP600M, uh, and it's black versus copper. The black cone I find more suitable for this heritage aesthetic. As powered monitors, the fives have a reported frequency response of 50 hertz to 25 kilohertz. The tweeters are driven by 20 watts, while the low frequency fiber composite drivers are powered by 60 watts. There is also a rear facing Tratrix base port which I find doubles as a handle for porting these around the house to my desired application of the day. For this video, we will explore all the digital and analog input options, HDMI ARC, Bluetooth, USB, optical SPDIF, phono, line, and auxiliary. Now at this time, I do not have a subwoofer available to test with them. So I will save that enhancement for another video. The fives weigh over 10 pounds each, with the primary unit about a pound heavier than the secondary speaker. Its largest dimension is its height of 12 inches. They are crafted out of MDF and feel solid. These speakers come with enough cables to handle most hookups, albeit our Toslink and iPhone tests uh, required additional accessories not provided in the box. The 4 meter or 13 foot proprietary speaker cable proved to be long enough for all the setup configurations we had for this round of tested applications. Along with the necessary DAC which is 120 kilohertz 24 bit, the fives have onboard DSP which provides a dynamic base EQ which can be enabled, disabled, by pressing the subwoofer button on the remote for three seconds. The supplied remote is simple and provides a few extra functions not accessible uh, directly on the speaker, such as sublevels, mute, play, and pause. For the first test setup, we hooked up the fives to a 2006 vintage flat panel television, which had its internal speakers complemented by an even older set of Cambridge Soundworks subset uh, serving as a faux set of surrounds which means they're simply duplicating the front speakers in the rear to fill the room with sound. The speaker interconnect was easy to connect. Uh, they're keyed, they have a notch at the top uh, of the connector so it makes it easy to know which direction these need to be plugged in. We like that the connectors uh, have a screw to securely keep them in place for assurance that they will not uh, work their way loose. We located the power unit closest to the power outlet to avoid extension cords. As this 1080p TV does not have an HDMI ARC connection, we leveraged its optical output. Now fortunately I had a spare optical cable for this purpose. Setting the fives input to optical, the speakers came to life with no further setting. While the Cambridge Soundworks system proved no match for the fives, I noticed that the fives seemed to lack clarity in the upper and mid range when streaming Amazon Music as a family, we decided to watch a couple of movies through the fives, uh, streaming over at Disney Plus. Uh, uh, and we did this in, in our family room with the fives versus our dedicated home theater, which is in our basement. Now, I felt the fives held up extremely well with commanding bass for their size. Uh, the movie sounded uh, very cinematic and rich. Uh, the issues with the higher frequencies were not noticeable with TV and movie listening. I did notice the volume knob, while very pleasing uh, and inviting to use. It's a very metallic uh, feel. Uh, it's configured to have really too fine of tuning 
uh, than necessary, at least for my taste, uh, and found it took about 16 full turns to move the dial from um, a minimum to a full maximum volume setting. As a result, it, it took a lot of spinning to arrive at the desired volumes. Another quirk was the remote conflicted with an external HDMI switch we were using for this TV. Every time I adjusted the volume of the fives through the remote, the HDMI switch changed inputs. Now I have uh, yet to investigate this further, but it certainly has caused me to forgo the remote until then uh, and change the volume the old fashioned way. For the second location, we moved the fives to the second floor bedroom, which has a newer 4K TV with HDMI support. Naturally, we connected the fives this time via HDMI arc. The wiring was easy, uh, but to enable the output, it was necessary to reconfigure the TV settings. This involved enabling the HDMI output and changing the signal from Dolby uh, digital to PCM. The PCM signal is necessary for the fives as um, no surround sound decoding is on board. Now with those settings made the speakers engaged with their input selected to TV. In this case the experience was uh, uh, more noticeable as the onboard speakers uh, on this TV are not as good as in fact, the older TV from 2006. And of course, there was no Cambridge Soundworks um, this time around. In our third location, we had a 1990s vintage Rotel receiver powering a pair of Monitor Audio 7 Gold bookshelf speakers, similar in size and driver configuration to the fives, now albeit with no horn. Here, the A-B test was a little more comparable using a common analog source which um, was connected via phono inputs with the selector switch set to line. Now, it is very interesting to observe that the monitor audio speakers had very poor bass but were very clear with the mid and high range. The fives retain the strong bass observed with the other setups, but here the issues of experiencing subdued uh, mid-high ranges uh, seem more pronounced with this side-by-side A-B test. With less than an ideal experiences with each speaker, it's really hard to pick a clear winner here uh, for this two-channel audio uh, enjoyment uh, that we were trying to seek here. Our vintage Sony PSX700 turntable is normally connected to our main system, which is driven by Polk LSI-15 towers, powered by Emotiva XPA-1 monoblocks in a large room. So for this uh, fourth setup, uh, we went into this test knowing the fives um, were fighting outside their white weight class here. Uh, now, as I have a Shure V15 Type 5 cartridge mounted, it is compatible with the 5's uh, internal moving magnet phono stage. I just needed to ensure that the phono input switch was set to phono, not line, and that the ground wire was attached to the grounding terminal screw. With the input set to phono as well, the 5's uh, functionally delivered. Playing back the Manhattan Transfer's coming out album, now Ringo Starr's drumming on this, etc., uh, did not have the life I normally recall uh, for this recording. I next attempted a configuration that Eclipse doesn't advertise, but one that is certainly within the parameters. I attached my Yamaha. P150 keyboard, Roland JV 1080 synth, uh, which are connected into a Moto M4 digital interface to the fives. Now, unfortunately, um, there does not appear to be an easy way to connect the Moto M4s, uh, which have an ESS Saber DAC built into them, digitally to 
the fives. So we opted um, for the analog output. Uh, this time with the, we used the aux input of the fives uh, to try that out. As I normally play uh, simply with the built-in speakers on the P150 piano, the fives made a huge difference and it was quite fun to play with this configuration and helps to make up uh, for deficiencies in my musical talent. That's for sure. For location six, it was time to test out the digital domain. Using the supplied USB cable, I uh, connected the USB-A end to the computer and the USB-B end to the fives and set the fives to USB. The Windows-based Dell, um, Windows 10, auto-detected the fives uh, and all was good. I also tested the same with my iMac with equal success. I did need to open the sound preferences on the iMac to direct its output to the fives, which were listed. For the seventh and final location, I connected my iPhone. This was attempted first via Bluetooth, which required pairing. Now, pairing is initiated from either the remote or the pair button behind the primary speaker with a three second push. On the iPhone, the fives became available and a connection was like any other Bluetooth device. I then connected the iPhone via USB cable using the iPhone USB adapter, now sometimes referred to as a camera adapter. Uh, this connection proved to be easy. And I certainly like the performance with the wire connection uh, better than the, the Aptics uh, powered Bluetooth uh, uh, codec there. So definitely a, a, a better signal coming into you if you use the wire connection versus Bluetooth. As I had the Clips Connect app already installed on my phone, from a prior review of the Clips True Wireless Earphones, the same app could be used to connect the fives and update its firmware. However, the app does not provide additional tone control adjustments. The only tone control currently with the fives is the ability to enable or disable dynamic bass EQ, which is done through the remote and not the app. Now the fives are a very versatile speaker. Ripewave Audio really likes how simple it is to connect and use with just about any TV, analog source, phone, or tablet. Uh, its cosmetic design is well executed with quality materials. Now one minor point I have is that the lettering on the back plate doesn't have enough contrast for me to read without an extra light or and glasses. Now, now on that I know my way around, I shouldn't need to read the lettering, but still, it would be nice if they had made the fonts more readable. The $800 uh, price seems reasonable given the flexibility and sound quality. The bass output is amazing and uh, unexpected for a speaker of this size. My only wish is that the upper frequencies were delivered with more clarity. While I um, will not use the fives for critical listening uh, as the result, they serve as one of the better options for this price to upgrade the sonic experience for underperforming setups, such as televisions. Since the fives are semi-portable, I also envision taking them out to the patio on nice days, which will be an upgrade over the Bose Mini 2 we have been using. Now that also can serve us well for our outdoor movie nights. So the big question is where we will decide to use the fives on a regular basis. Now they're too big for my computer workspace. Uh, you could 
see that from the video. Um, a, that was a duty that the Cambridge Soundworks handled actually quite well. Uh, placement in the bedroom was also a little on the cramp side. Now, I did have fun using them on my keyboard. However, the role um, they best serve for us is in the living room with its TV. Now, this TV serves as a secondary movie gaming system, and the upgrade will be enjoyed by the whole family in this location. Now, we'll still have the flexibility to move it around as needed, um, but it will likely spend most of its time in the living room. Now, I want to send my appreciation out to the Hi-Fi Summit and Clips who made this video possible through the giveaway Clips ran in conjunction with the Hi-Fi Summit. Now, both the Hi-Fi Summit and Clips do an amazing job to deliver the experiences their audiences and customers are seeking. This was certainly a special prize for me, and the Fives will be enjoyed by my family throughout the year. Now, if you have the Fives, we would appreciate hearing your feedback. Now, do you feel the Fives are sufficient for TV movie viewing? Do you feel that they're also good for two-channel audio listening? Do you strive for a simplified surround sound experience? Now, how will the Fives compare with Clips' upcoming Cinema 600 Soundbar 5.1 system um, with wireless surrounds? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave audio community. Now, furthermore, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave audio community be sure to select the bell icon so you'll be notified as soon as the next video is posted. Until then, keep evolving your audio experience.